How are you today, buddy? How's it going? Good, thank you. Okay, so tomorrow's D Day. Uh, I would I would it love is. to uh, fade new lows in the euro uh, after the press conference. That's my ideal. Um, what are your thoughts? You think uh, to to get long or to or to cover shorts? Excuse me. To get long or to yeah, cover shorts? Well, uh, I'm not short, so it would be to get long. Uh, looking for uh, you know a potential turn by the end of the month. So uh, I have some zones. Got them from Christian Kerr around 3020, 3085. There's some cycles due this week and then later in the month. But uh, I think he brought up uh, the sentiment uh, readings on Euro are 6% bulls. And the last time we've been here is 2011. Yeah, well, that's telling. Yeah, so, that is telling. Uh, how do you think that uh, might be able yeah. to play out? It doesn't sound like you think it could, and that's fine. I mean, that's what makes a market. But uh, you're you're one of the best when it comes to fundamentals, Jamie, and uh, interpreting the dragon, Draghi the dragon. How could this possibly set up where uh, the market at first thinks that what Draghi says is going to have um, influence in the markets and drive the euro down, and then uh, after he's done, they pick it apart, and uh, it's really just more jawboning. Is that the possibility? It, it, it is a possibility, but we seem to, since since May, so things fundamentally changed back back at that May meeting when they went from you know. This whole process really started to accelerate around November of last year when inflation first dropped below 1%. Um, then he started talking tough, and we got really very, very little action on, on, until that May meeting. When Even in the, in, in, in the statement, he didn't make any um, outright declarations that they were going to do anything coming going forward. It was, in a, it was in response to a question way into the meeting when he finally said, oh, and, and we could do something next month. Uh, right. you know, I mean, that was the first time that they, that they made any... Um, Real concrete um, shift, shift in uh, shift in policy. So, um, t to me, look, I, I I hate to fade trends. I mean, because I think as, as retail traders, more times than not, um, the natural inclination is is to trade is to is to fade um, strong trends. So you may be right. I mean, we may. may uh, something like that and do bounce. The problem is that 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 my readers tend to start fading things at the turns. So, uh, for instance, you know, we went up to 140, you know, we come down 139 and a quarter and they're already yeah, buying. I the I was, I, so, it, I, I'm really, it's so difficult to pick yeah. bottoms. I, I much prefer um, making a bottom, making a demonstrable bottom. You can look at the chart and say, "Yep, there it was." If we get back above this level, I, you know, I like it higher, and I think I think we've we've done, you know, kind of kind of a medium term. Is bottom. that thirty three forty still your line in the sand for that, or would yeah, it drop yeah, because the euros dropped to thirty two forty? No, uh, the, I mean, the, the, excuse me, thirty two. Yeah, right now one thirty two and a quarter, roughly, is, is is my level. Yeah, that that kind of line in the sand has okay. dropped. Um, so, so that's really my kind of warning area now. If we can get above 132 and a quarter, 132, 35 in there, then I, then I would say, yeah, okay, we, we probably done, done our, our, our worst to the downside in the, in the medium term. Look, you know, I, I think what we'll see from Draghi is some incremental um, move tomorrow for, for easier policy down the road. Um, maybe even a small rate cut, though. Is that going to matter? No, I really honestly don't think a 5 or 10 basis point rate cut makes a a dime's worth of difference, and I don't think he does either. I mean, he said when they cut rates to 15 basis points, he said, look, we're effectively at the lower bound. If they go to five basis points, yeah, they're effectively at the lower bound. It really, you know, it, it, it it's rearranging the deck, deck chairs on the Titanic at this yeah. stage. Um, uh, we, we do tend to... Uh, I, I will. I will. You are right. On days of, of ECB meetings, um, they can often be sort of the watershed um, moments um, where, where you do get turns. Where, where as you say, you know, the, the market is is uh, is anticipating tightening or, or, or at least more dovish commentary, the pointing to to, to, to tightening in the in the near future. Uh, excuse me, easier easier policy in the, in, the, in the near future. Um, can can that lead to sort of a washout sort of situation? Yeah, it can, but 
boy, that's that that's tough. That that is a, it's a very difficult um, uh, thing to do to, to catch the falling knife and say, okay, this this is this is the ball. Sure hard to short really it here hurt. too, though, isn't it? Uh, very, very. I mean, it's been hard um, to short as, it. Uh, as we, as yeah. we said. It comes down and it holds every level. You know, I mean, yesterday we we're talking about the, the 130, um, 132, 45, 60 area being a level. We went right up to 60 today and yeah. stopped. This thing is so orderly. It just There just doesn't seem to be any any sniff of panic. I mean, today I, I would have expected, you you know, that this Ukraine ceasefire for how, for whatever good that is. You know, you, you would think we would get some, you know, a more significant pop out of that. I guess yesterday's pop was probably somewhat related to that whether you know russian pe people close to the russian government got this news early and they sold gold and they sold treasuries and, and they and, and and they bought euro yen and dollar yen and things like that because the move came yesterday not today which is which is a little bit a little bit odd um but um you know we didn't get a whole heck of a lot of follow through. It only bounced 50 pips uh, on what could be a ceasefire. So to me, it just seems the market is very comfortable being short. We we hold every level right now. 60 is kind of my level. If we break that, I think 132 and a quarter becomes kind of the crucial line in the sand. Above there, you know, you might say, okay, yeah, we've, we've done our work to the downside. Now, I do expect Draghi to be to be dovish. You know, that is, that, that's, that's not a minority view. Whether or not he, he takes any concrete policy steps remains to be seen. Um, but look, you know, we're sliding towards deflation. Even if Ukraine is solved tomorrow, you know, if Ukraine just just disappeared as as an issue and sanctions were all lifted and everything, I think that has a marginal boost to the to, to the euro and to the eurozone economy. The, the the structural rigidities are still there. You still have France with with an, an, an unworkable labor market. You still have Italy with an unworkable labor market. These things aren't going away, and the, the, the weakness in the economy and, and the low inflation makes it very difficult for them to service their, their, their big debts. So the, these problems are, are, are not going to go away. Can you get a short-term bounce on, on an improvement in Ukraine? Yeah. I mean, the fact that we haven't seen a bigger one is a little bit, um, a, a little bit worrisome, if that's your view. Um, well, wouldn't a rally in the euro, the a rally in the euro actually exacerbate the problem that you have? And maybe that that a big rally, sure. You know, I mean, 132, 133 no. doesn't matter, but yeah, if you were 137, 138, yes, that would definitely exacerbate okay. the problem. Um, you know, I, the market just seems very, very comfortable. Yeah. You know, you that's what makes me skeptical. Usually, to extreme levels. You know, well, but it also usually you get that sort of cat on a hot tin roof feeling from 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 the shorts in these sorts of markets where everybody's. Um, you know, looking at looking to cover all at the same time. I don't, you, you, you may be right. In, invariably, when markets get one sided, you get the you bet the, you get the big corrective bounce. But this thing has just been so orderly. I think I, I'm a Missourian right. on this one. You got to you got to show me. I, I I just I find it really difficult to pick bottoms because I think you probably could have picked three or four already, and 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 been steamrolled. Well, I never, you know, I don't marry anything. So now you know yeah, there there have been I mean, some that's, decent that's the there have been I mean, some decent counter trend trades there. Uh, but you're right. Uh, the easy money was put on the trade and go away. So uh, uh, anything else catching yeah, your I, interest I, that we should be aware of into tomorrow? Uh, into tomorrow, boom, boom, boom. I mean, you do get U.S. data tomorrow. Um, you, you get the ADP and, and the service sector PMIs. Those have been the, the PMIs have been quite strong. Um, you know, I don't think it's moving the Fed anticipation any 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 closer. But I think it, it does underpin. Um, the the fact that you know rates are going up in the U.S. and the U.K. before the rest of the world, and you know that should be supported for for dollar yen, um, you know for the interest rate sensitive pairs, um, yields are starting to get at interesting levels. You know, I think above this kind of two forty four. Yeah, that's a line. Two forty five would give me two sixty if we close above it. So I think that's significant because so that's twice we were down at two thirty and and we bounced. So you're gonna have a little bit of a double bottom yeah. down there. And two forty five um, we so, failed from. Uh, last time we were at 245, exactly. off the first 230. Exactly. So that, would, that, that, would, that that would that would give me comfort um, as a dollar bull. You know, getting getting back above that level. I'm actually thinking that might be uh, uh, a catalyst for a dollar pullback. Is uh, you know uh, what what the bonds denominated in, and if the bonds are under pressure, perhaps the dollar flows aren't as good. Is that a possibility? 
Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the reason we're here is because the dollar flows have been so good. Um, but that was what yields uh, yeah. dropping everywhere. True, true. Um, you know, but my yields are going to continue to drop in Europe. I would yeah. suspect, um, at least, at least slowly. Um, you know, I, I think spreads are going to widen in, in in favor of the U.S. and that's always been that's always okay. been dollar supportive. Um, yeah, I mean, in the in the very short term, it, it, it might be. Somewhat, I don't know. You know, look, the textbook tells us higher higher yields um, are you know support the dollar. You know, unless there's some sort of stampede, which I don't anticipate, um, then you know well, and, and maybe if you get some war and one of the, UK, of the Ukraine trade. You know, if you got a sudden um, move out of, out of Treasuries because the feeling was that you know Eastern Europe isn't going to blow up, there isn't going to be a wider war in Europe. Uh, yes, that that might stop some of those some of those um, dollar inflows. For the time being, but once yields backed up, say to whatever two eighty, where, wherever wherever it was when where, when that unwinding ended, then I think it began. Yeah. In eighty seven, in eighty seven, we had the bonds again. going <laughs> up, down, yields going up, dollar going down, stocks going up, um, and that was uh, that was a catalyst for the crash in eighty seven. So I have seen the dollar go down with yields. And you had a, st you had a stubbornly tight European Central Bank at, at that time That's at right. That time it was just well. the, uh, the, the Deutschmark. Is, so the Deutschmark exactly. was like gold back then. Exactly. All right, buddy. Well, thank you. Uh, it should be interesting tomorrow. Thanks for your time and edifying us, Jamie. Should be. All right, buddy. Okay. Thanks, Dale.